Hi everybody, I'm Benjamin McCarthy. This is Apollo, and... No. Ow. Ow! I'm Benjamin McCarthy, and this Wednesday, I will be bringing you a video, because I'm not dead. And that means you're going to learn how to use Sketchbook Pro which I find to be a really good program. I've used Adobe Photoshop. Um, I've used uh, Corel Painter, ArtRage, and all those softwares, while they're good, I find that Sketchbook Pro is the most intuitive out of all those. So today, I'm gonna be showing you very basics. So, we can begin by opening Sketchbook Pro. First thing I like to do is adjust my image size because right now I sort of have this canvas that's a little bit too large and too long for my liking. So I would just go up to image, image size, and I'm an American boy so I like to work on American boy dimensions so like an 11 by 14 and I uncheck key proportions I can rotate this and you'll notice that I'm holding the space bar to pull up this little icon here uh, I can either drag around the canvas I can zoom in I can rotate it and that's all controlled by the spacebar. I use keyboard shortcuts, although there are these shortcut keys on the side of this Wacom tablet. Uh, and most of them have something like that. Uh, I have another tablet here that also has some shortcut keys uh, right here in the top. This is the Intuos Draw. Uh, it's kind of your most basic model there. And then this one's the Intuos Pro Paper Edition. I don't really use the paper on it. Um, so moving on, we've got our basic tool there and our keyboard shortcut. And I like to keep everything linear with the computer. So uh, the first thing that I can show you here is going to be the pencil tool. Scribbly shading there, really light. And then I can go in hard and get those bold lines too. So the pencil really reacts pretty similarly to a regular pencil for you. So that's nice. There's his mustache. Okay, so I think I've shown you about enough with the pencil. I will say that uh, you can also change the settings to any of your tools. So I just clicked on this in the left side my toolbar which you can move these things around if you like it on your right side that's fine and then I could change the size of my pencil now I got a really thick tip or I like it somewhere down around here and the opacity too you can make it really super translucent and that's that I've got another pencil over here. It's gonna maybe have a slightly different tip. This one doesn't have the little circles on it. And I think I actually prefer this pencil. Change the opacity, same things apply. So, you know, we'll add a little bit to this Tesla here. I'm not gonna go too in depth with it. Uh, this is more about the tools than my actual artwork here. So just ignore the kind of childish, uh, effort here all right so moving down the line now we've got the airbrush and uh, say I want to um, add some well I'll show you two ways to use this so we could add a layer and drop that layer underneath so now I'm 
I'm kind of showing you two things at once here. I'm showing you the airbrush and the layers, and then I have my color puck here, and say I want to make uh, a blue Nikola Tesla. Here's uh, yet another tip. If you look at my hands on the keyboard, I'm using the bracket right near the enter or return key, and I'm just gonna up my brush size so you can see that circle getting bigger. I'm gonna do the down bracket, get a smaller circle. And so I could do that underneath the sketch now that I've put a layer underneath it. So if you look on the right side, you'll see that layer two is underneath layer one, and now it's not going to affect layer one. So I can just color Tesla in. That's a great trick. Um, although what I prefer doing instead of airbrush for that, typically I will do this solid paintbrush tool here. So I might not show you all the tools, but I'm gonna show you the ones that I find relevant when I'm doing art. And so then you get nice full colors, whereas the airbrush is gonna leave you with um, a little bit of the canvas showing through. So I might do that, and then if I want to add in some highlights to Tesla's head, I would continue with the flat colors. And that brings me to my next tool, the blender brush. So we've got a few of these, these gray brushes down here. So if you look on the left, we've got three of the blending brushes. And then I might uh, choose one of these and I can adjust how much it blends. So you can see up near these checkers, this is kind of what it'll look like if you pass over something solid like that. Uh, so I could really go big with it. Keep it kind of medium like I like. Flow, um, this is how much it's gonna kind of pull. So I like to keep that also pretty medium, like sort of a motion blur look. And then the strength, strength and flow are kind of work in similar ways. Um, so I'll keep that also semi blurry. I like to keep kind of a soft blending brush so it almost feels like you're dry brushing um, like you would with traditional painting. So I just blur in these two colors together and this will give you a nice gradient. There's another way to get a gradient too though. Here's my selection tool. I can do this magic wand tool here. So that's one way to select a shape if I wanted to keep it just within Tesla's head. And then I could take the paint bucket and here's just a solid fill. So purple face, boom. Purple face. Or I could do a green face. Boom, green face. Or I could do a gradient like I was mentioning before. So now, say I wanted to keep him black and white. That's great. I could do that. That's a quick way to get a nice gradient there. What's cool too is you can also change your gradient colors. So I could make my highlight uh, yellow. And I could make my midtone an orange. And my kind of low tone red. I can stretch this around. And now it's tan Tesla, or slightly sunburnt Tesla. So draw some leaves. Something like that, and I want to give them a gradient. Boom. Change these colors to something more fitting. Okay, so I like that gradient. And now say I want to lay it in over here. Oops, not closed. Um, well, I can flip the way the gradient works. So, um, I can just click on that little button up top and it flips the gradient around. That'll save you some time. 
And we could also do like a sunburst type of gradient. Now the gradient has more of a circular uh, expansion from like a center point. Or you could actually add more bubbles to your gradient and do really like it, it seems like an infinite amount, probably not infinite, but um, you could do more than you would really need with the gradient tool. You can also just lay in a quick background uh, just by clicking the background layer. A lot of awesome things you can do with the layers. Uh, now I'm going to get rid of that. And if I want to delete a layer, I just hold down on that circle. So you can see I'm putting pressure on with my pen and then just drag delete layer. I'll show you a couple more tools here. Uh, for this particular Wacom tablet, it's got an eraser on the pen. So that there is the eraser. And so I could use either a hard eraser and cut right through it, change the bracket size. These keyboard shortcuts are really gonna be pretty necessary if you wanna keep your workflow sort of uh, decently quick. And then I can make a softer eraser too. That's why I like to keep two on hand there. And maybe I can like blur out edges like that. So the ruler tool, this one's really great. Uh, you just kinda shift it by dragging one of these points and then your pencil or paintbrush will snap right to it. So doo -doo -doo, and I drag it here. Uh, yep. And maybe now I want to do uh, some kind of perspective based drawing. So one point perspective. Um, this is going to be a great tool. It's really easy to mess up a perspective drawing pretty quickly if you're not careful. So you know, if I'm doing like a building like this, this is really stupid looking, but um, it'll help me stay on track if I'm doing, oops, it locks in to the lines. So aside from that, uh, we've also got the symmetry tool. This is basically the idea. It's kind of cool though. Uh, maybe if you're doing some kind of creature, yeah, it does help you kind of cut down the time you're working on it. Helps you produce some ideas pretty fast. So that's a really nice tool. And you can go pretty crazy with this kind of perspective here. You can uh, definitely make some really trippy kind of designs with that. A nice geometrical sort of things. So I'm just, I'm scribbling right now and it's creating something really quite nice. Well, that's fun. Uh, we also have the leash tool. So I'm just deleting my layers as I go here and then unselecting the last thing up top, the last tool. The leash tool uh, is going to give you a nice smooth line. So as you can see, I've got this little dotted line leash. It's going to steady your hand. Uh, without it, it would look something like this. So we'll do a test here. I'm going to try and make a straight line. It's without the leash tool. Here's with the leash tool. So you can see it steadies the stroke. You also have the Copic library. This is really cool. Um, it sort of offers you like a limited palette for each color. So within these color schemes, you could probably make a pretty cool picture. So those are really nice for those of you who love Copic. That will be certainly be a treat there. And yeah, these colors just go nicely together. So this will help you kind of choose a good limited palette, you know, touches of red there. This is a nice little color scheme that would work great in any kind of picture. And these last couple things here, so that's the Copic marker selector. Um, this is, you'll see as I click it on and off, the thing pops up. This was already up. This is my color picker, color editor. Here's the color picking puck and then I can edit it with that uh, little 
gradient circle there. Here's just my tool set. So clicking it on, clicking it off, you'll see it just appear and disappear in the left. And my layer editor here, on and off. So I hope that uh, gives you a thorough look at the tools of Sketchbook Pro. Perhaps in another video, I'll cover a little bit better how to use the tools uh, in an actual practical application. But um, for now, it's just letting you know where all of the tools are and uh, just a really general kind of overview of how they work. So until next time.